Welcome back, Digital Electronics. Uh, we're going to be going through the asynchronous scanner, which we've already done, but we're going to add it with uh, MSI gates or medium scale integration gates. Okay, so we're going to do our counter with a pre made chip for us uh, that will do some of the counting for us. Okay, so it's a, uh, we're going to use the uh, 74 LS93. It's a four bit ripple counter. All right, so that means that we can go. 0, 0, 0, 0, up to 1, 1, 1, 1, or we're going to be counting 0 to 15, okay? So it'll be, you know, part of the limitations. <clears throat> so when we take a look at what's inside this chip, okay, so notice that we can use JK flip-flops, and like we said, this is a 4-bit ripple counter, so we're going to need 4 flip-flops, right? But those are going to be built inside to the chip. So we're going to have input A, and input B. Those are going to feed the clocks for what we're doing. And notice we're still okay asynchronous here so that we only have one clock signal to each one and then the rest of the clock signals are fed by the preceding output of the preceding uh, flip-flop. Okay so it's still a divide by two and then we're going to have a divide by eight section. Okay so now there's two different sections a divide by two and to divide by eight. So when we take a look at this, each section is going to be triggered by a high to low transition. So the falling edge of the clock, all right, for this particular chip. And remember, this is specific to this counter, the 74LS93. But we're going to use this uh, in class. We're going to do a couple different labs. We're going to do like a 60 second counter uh, and doing those sort of things. So you're going to use this specific chip to do this, okay? So we can use each section together or we can use them separately if we need to. And we have a uh, two input gate, or two input NAND gate, all right? That's gonna be our master reset. That's gonna clear everything out. Notice that that NAND gate is tied to all the clears on each flip-flop, okay? And all the JKs, um, it's not on here, but everybody's going to be connected to 5 volts as well. But remember, this is internal to the chip. So this would be, you know, something that you might have built in the last lab. But, you know, it's built and designed into this chip for us to use. All right, so how do we use these different sections here, okay? So we're going to cascade through. So like I said, there's a divide by 2 section. There's a divide by 8 section. So we can use those different pieces. All right, the divide by two section we're going to be able to use as a one bit counter. Okay, so we can go zero, 01 or zero, 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 0001 and that sort of thing. Okay, those are really kind of our own choices, two choices when we have a, uh, a one bit counter. Now we use the divide by eight for the three bit counter. Okay, so as we do this, all right, we are going to increase the count. Uh, each time. It's no different. This is nothing new, right? One flip-flop gives us zero, zero, or zero, one, right? We choose between zero, we choose between one. Okay, if we have two flip-flops, we can choose between zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So we can count up to three, right? Zero to three. If we have three flip-flops, right? If we have three flip-flops, that's a three-bit counter for us we can count from zero, zero, zero up to one, one, one. And then if we have a four bits, okay, we can go and we have four flip-flops, we can go from zero, 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 zero up to one, 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 one. Okay, so that's really as, as we add these. So this particular chip can count from zero, 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 zero up to one, 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 one in binary or zero to 15 in our decimal. Okay, so we can cascade everything down so we can take the divide by 2 turns into divide by 8, which turns into divide by 16. I know that sounds funky, but that's really just our divide by 2 that we talked about with flip-flops. Okay, the first one divided, you know, the clock period in half. Okay, and then we divide that period in half, and then we divide the next period in half, and the next period in half. So essentially, you know, that's what's really going on. Okay, so we're, it's the divide by two circuit extended out, but when you compare it back to the original clock, right, it ends up being like divide by 16, okay? So 
How we're going to use these is very important because you are going to breadboard this up in class, your 60 second counter. So you're going to design this in multi-sim and you're going to breadboard it. Okay, so we're going to need the 74LS93 data sheet or the diagram for it. So we can see on here, we've got to be very careful where we plug things in. So make sure that you have this sheet up when you're breadboarding. Notice the 74LS93 has 14 pins. 14 pins. But what you have to pay attention to is where ground and VCC go. They are not going to default to pin 7 and pin 14 like our normal chips, our, our logic gate chips. Okay, we have to pay attention that ground is going to pin 10 here and that VCC is going to pin 5. So it's very, very important. We're going to send our two inputs into pin 1 and pin 14. Okay, and then we have our outputs, our QA, our QB, our QC, and our QD. Those are what we're going to be reading. Okay, so those are going to be outputs. Okay, the NCs, okay, we're not using any of those for this scenario. And if you notice, internally, they don't connect to anything inside that chip. Okay, so we're not, we're not using those. And then we have to use R0, 1 and R02 because those are going to be the master resets that feed in. Okay, so that's really all that we're sending in here. A and B, R01 and R02. VCC, ground. Then we have our outputs, QA, QB, QC, and QD. The other pins we are not using. Okay, so just so that you understand that. Now, It'll, we'll show you and we'll walk through how to wire everything up and make sure that you're running correctly when we go through in class. But make sure that we understand how the counter works. Remember L equals zero, H equals one. So when the count is zero, we're at zero, 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 or low, 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 low. So that's what the outputs are gonna be for QA and all the way through QD. Okay, what you need to pay attention to here. All right, QA is the least significant bit. QD is the most significant bit as we go through all this, all right? And so the truth table that you see on the left for the count sequence, it's literally going 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 1. Just like we should know how to do that table in class, okay? And our count is gonna be from 0 to 15. So the reset truth table for us okay is as shown on the right so if we have r01 and r02 if we have a high high or if we have a 1 1 that goes into that reset what the outputs are automatically going to do what does reset do it resets everything to zero so our outputs qd qc qb and qa will all be low so they'll all be zero so the output of the counter when we hit reset, should reset everything down to zero. That one should make sense. Okay, then when we have our other two scenarios, if we have L and X, remember X is a don't care. So that situation could be zero, one, or zero, zero. It's gonna output the count there. Okay, same with the next scenario, X, L. X is still, still, is still a don't care situation. We don't care if X is high or low there. We don't care if X is zero, we don't care if X is one. So the other scenario would be zero, zero, or one, zero. It will just output whatever the count is. So the only thing that we care about there on that reset is if we get the situation of a one, one, it's going to reset the counter down to zero. Any other situation keeps the counter still at its count. Okay, so that's why the reset only resets when both input signals are high because they're inverted, right? And we send them through the NAND. So this is how yours should look wired up, okay? So we are controlling the reset. Notice we have R01 and R02. R01, we are automatically sending it to five volts, which means R01 will always be a one. I'm gonna step back a slide. So that means R01 here will always be high. So regardless of the don't cares or the highs, 
So what's going to control it is R02, that signal that's coming in here that helps reset. Okay, so when we use the reset, okay, it's very important. If we want this counter to count from 0 to 13, okay, it's just like any other counter we've done. We want to reset it 12. I'm sorry, I misspoke. We want the counter to go from 0 to 12. We're going to reset it 13. So I got a little backwards there on you. We want the counter to reset at 12. So we have to do one more than the count, just like we did with the other counters. All right, so if we want this to reset at 12, 12 in binary is 110. So in order for us to reset it, we need to have it reach 13, which is 1101. Remember, you need to pay attention, QA is the least significant bit, QD is the most significant bit. Because I'm going to have you do some other reset counts and things in your lab. All right, I might make you count in a certain order or make you only count to like 10 or something like that. You need to be able to show where the inverters go. So notice we place an inverter on QB so that we get a zero there. So what we're going through, what's circled here where the reset is, all right, we're going to assume that the output of QA, QB, and QC and QD is all going to be a 1, right? If it goes through its entire cycle, it's going to go from 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 1. So we know that those should be outputting 1s. Well, we want it to reset at 12, which means it's got to reach 13. So we know that that's going to happen when QD is 1, QC is 1, QB we have to force to be 0 there, and QA is 1. So that's why we have to put that specific inverter there. All right, and then we can use our four input NAND gate. All right, so remember NAND's the only one that's going to give us when we're getting not A and B. So we want those to come in, and then we're going to, those are our zeros, and then we want to invert that signal so it becomes a 1. Okay, so the NAND gate's there because it's going to take those and it's going to knot all those together and then do the inverse of those. So if we're knotting one and one, or not knotting, if we're NANDing it, if we have one and one and zero and one, when we AND all those, okay, we're going to get a zero, but then we invert that signal so that it's a one. Okay, and then we send that back through in the inverter so that we're sending in a zero there. So when we get the opposite of all that, we'll send a one in so that it's a high high and it resets it all. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense as you go through that and break that down. All right, last couple parts of this design. We need to look at what input A and input B is. So remember before we do need a clock signal that's driving this. So we are going to input the clock into input A. Okay, so that's going to drive it. So that's going to, remember, this one changes on the falling edge of the clock. So every time we go high to low, the falling edge of the clock is going to move these through the internal JK flip-flops. And then we need our input B, okay, which will be our other input that's going to toggle. And we're putting it on the least significant bit, QA, because QA is going to toggle the most, okay? So it's going to act like that second input. So that's going to toggle every time there's a clock change. So that's why we're using QA there. If we wanted to slow it down and change the clock and do some funky things, um, we would put it on QB, QC, or QD. But since QA is the least significant bit, okay, it toggles with every single clock change. So that's why it's our input B. Okay, so hopefully that covers everything on here. And then we're going to go ahead and let's take a look at what it does timing-wise. Okay, so if we set this up and run through everything, we can look at the different scenarios. So starting with the timing piece, all right, we can see that it goes 0, 0, 0, 0, and then we get all the way down to 1, 1, 0, 0 which is 12, which is C, right? Because remember, we can only do digits 0 through 9, and then go A, B, C, D, E, and F, okay? So 
we notice that it resets at 12, right? 1100. Zero, zero. It's going to reset back to zero based on our design here. Now in class, when you guys do your lab, you can play around with the different, uh, you know, putting not gates in different places to see where you're actually going to get the reset out. Okay, but notice what I was saying before. QA is the least significant bit. So it's the one that's going to toggle with every clock change. So the clock change isn't on here, okay? But we can see, all right, how each one is a divide by two circuit, okay? Or circuit or output, okay? Does it, if that makes sense. So that's really what we're doing and how we're keeping track of the count. All right, so you guys are going to build this one uh, in multi-sim and I'll make it work. And then eventually you're going to take a couple of these and you're going to do a 60 second counter and use one to kind of reset the other. So it's got to toggle all the way up. Okay. So lastly, the limitations on the 74 LS93. Okay, so it's an all-in-one package, but there's no design flexibility. We are stuck doing 000. zero, zero up to one 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 okay so you know we're limited and um, we can't preset the flip-flops okay so the count for these will always have to start at zero okay and it can only go up to 15 so that's you know really all it is so if we want an up counter that starts at zero all the time okay and goes you know potentially up to 15 this is our ideal integrated circuit or integrated chip, okay? The 74LS93. But just so you know, there's limitations. They're not always used, but it's nice to have a convenient all-in-one package. Instead of you sitting there on your screen and putting all these flip-flops up and making sure everything's running correctly, I know it's a very more simplistic design when we have a chip that does all of that for us. So, but uh, we'll be working extensively on, on these labs in class. So, or those of you at home that have multi-sim and things like that, you can work on it there too. But else guys, have a great day. I will see you in class.